Hello, is this Dr. Beer? Mm -hmm. This is Dan Holt in Crestwood, Oregon. Dan Holt Tape Service? Yes, Dan. You gave me your phone number. So sure. Okay. How are you? Just fine. Good. How's business doing? Uh, just fine. Good. Uh, not real good. I mean, uh, I think we've only got probably about <laughs> three three tapes sold and, and about six or nine or something like that rented since the last time I heard from you. Yeah, well, people are... You gotta be a special type of person to hear the truth anymore. Yeah, it seems like. Right, right. How are things out there? Oh, pretty good. Weather wise? Well, the weather is alright so far. Uh huh. How is it back there? I think it was about 80 or something like that yesterday. Good Lord. It's wet and cold here. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Your voice sounds a little different. Did you. I've been talking on the telephone for about the last hour. Oh, is that why? Oh, oh yeah, these people calling me up, you know. Oh, there was a man that called me, uh, or that wrote, and he was just wondering if you if you wanted your phone number given out. Cause no, you don't give my cell phone number out, Dan. I won't. I I I got a sore throat now, and everybody's got a cold here. It's raining and cold and damp. Oh, okay, I won't then. It's terrible as thick as here. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'd, I'd like to record uh, this if if I could ask you a few questions today, if you wouldn't mind. Oh boy, I just got off the telephone and was giving an interview. Oh. Well, what, what's this all about? Okay, well, I was uh, going to ask you if you knew any more about the explosion there in Russia. About oh, the... No, L listen, Dan, I don't know any of that stuff anymore because I'm, you know, I'm back to my old uh, profession, which is being a lawyer. Oh. And also on economic matters. That's all I'm doing today, Dan. Okay. I mean, uh, all, all my contacts now are... Uh, all they're doing is giving me economic uh, intelligence. Oh, I see. Just about the economic situation is all. Huh? That's right. That's all I talk about now. Oh, okay. Because uh, I just don't have time, you know, uh, to do anything else. i got to make a living, son. Yeah, well, that's true. Everybody has to do that. Yeah, i got three children and a good wife. Yeah. So i got to do that. I, I, I've expended ten years of my life in capital and trying to inform the American people, and they just, uh, you know, they, just, they they got their own troubles. Well, some of them do, but there's some that are still interested. Oh, I know. I, I can tell by my letters I'm getting. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, uh, you don't know... You, don't you read the Wisconsin report? No, I just read that one article. Well, I, I, I publish an article every month in there. Oh. Oh, you can subscribe to it then, huh? Well, it's only about $10 a year. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know what... I thought they just ran that one article. No, they run one every month, and then in the between time, they are using, uh, they uh, transcribe my radio programs that I had in the past. Oh, I didn't know you had. You okay. better, you better write the Wisconsin report, Dan. Oh, I've got a couple of recordings of California radio reports that were given way back about the Rockefellers. When well, they that's were what they're doing. They, they are. They're uh, transcribing all these old tapes of mine, these broadcast tapes. Oh, okay. And well, they're getting uh, hundreds of subscriptions all over the country. Oh, for the newspaper? Sure. Oh, okay. All right. And then she sells the transcripts of the uh, audio letters, of the past oh. audio letters. I see. Okay. You should get in touch with her, Dan. Well, I guess so. I've still got the newspaper. I can get the address off there. Yeah, post office box 45. Post Office Box 45. Yeah, Brookfield, Wisconsin. 5305, something like that. 5305. Yeah, okay, well, I can, like I, can, I can look well, it up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, 5305, Brook, Brookfield, Wisconsin. Okay. And just put down Virginia Mevis, M E V E S. And uh, now Virginia what? M E V E S Mevis. Virginia Mevis. She's the publisher. Oh. And she uh, tell her you want some past copies because she's uh, running now an interview that I had with Art Bentley down in uh, Charleston, West Virginia. Okay. How long have they been running your? Articles? Oh, for God's sake! Ever since I stopped the audio letter. Oh. Oh, it's ever since back then. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. She's been taking these recordings, you know, that people have recorded. 
some of the women said they've got them, men have them. That, that I, well, I was interviewed on radio stations all over the country. Yeah, I've got two of them in the California radio stations down here. Well, well make a deal with the Virginia Mavericks. You may pay you for them. Oh, okay. Um, also, I was just wondering, there's several people still really interested in any kind of information they get. I was just wondering, do you know of anyone uh, that could give even low intelligence information on just some of the things that are taking place right now, like space shuttles and, uh, well, like the Rajneese and uh, things like that? I wish I could tell you, Dan, but I'm completely out of that. I mean, is there anyone you know that might, that, you know, that doesn't want a lot of money, that, that could, that were just interested in, you know, in the American people? That... Yeah, I, mean, I don't know of anyone. Hmm. And all of my, all of my contacts have been hushed up right now. Oh. Uh, on, on national security stuff, because I was given too much truth. Yeah, were you saying they had that new, uh, royal, uh, security, uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, well, anyway, where they didn't give out any information. Uh, That's right. With just a few people, so. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, I've told everybody what is going on. Those tapes are just as new today. Well, I think of five or six years still ahead on some of them. Oh, yeah, there's still things that aren't come out in the news yet. Oh, yeah, Don. Also, did, did you ever have any kind of pictures or any kind of information on the synthetic automatons or robots? Or yes, we have plenty of evidence. I wouldn't have put them in that tape if it didn't. But they, they've all been returned. They let me view them. Oh, but you don't have anything right now? Not now. No, I've turned them back in. Oh, I had to give up all that stuff. Oh. Hey, listen, you want me to live, don't you? Yeah, well, everybody... I, mean, I, came, I came close to death. Yeah, I realize that. Everybody probably that's in that, you know, giving out information. Yeah, if they could, if they could have bought up all the tapes that everybody has, uh, they would, they would do it. But since they're just like feathers in the wind, they can't get them back. So, so what they'll do is just, they'll just deny everything that's on there. Oh. Well, what do they do? Just threaten you? Or? Sure. Oh. My three kids. Hmm. Oh, I see. Hmm. But that was that's over with now, I see. Yeah. I wish we could find some kind of information, though. You can't remember any more about the automatons besides what you told me, can you? No, like the... They, you said they were made out of, like, cow... They take uh, parts of cows or something and... Well, so they don't even do that anymore. Oh, really? They're so far ahead. But were they making them just out of synthetic material now? Yeah. And no cow parts at all? No, no more. That's all old stuff. That was all the original. That was the old stuff. I notice when you look at Reagan, you can see his, uh, the wrinkles on his face change every once in a while. And he'll have wrinkles in one place one one time, and then a few months later, they'll be in a different place. There's a lot of people walking around. Is Mondale and Ferraro both automatons? I don't know, really. You don't know? I really don't know. Okay. I mean, it's been two or three years now since I've given that stuff up. I, I was walking on dangerous ground, brother. Yeah. I wouldn't mind taking that spot if uh, you know if, uh, if I could find somebody that could that had information yeah but they've all closed down mm. See, they were in the government there's nobody even that you know like the janitor somebody that just have you know no, just a no few way then okay. no way it's all closed down huh I didn't realize that we, we agreed to that oh we had to hmm they said thank god you just weren't hurt all over the world Hmm. They just ridiculed me, you know, they, they they would ridicule, that's the worst thing in the world. Well, not really. There's, I mean, there's worse things than that. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody that I know of that, uh, you know, that's in, telling, well, what's going on in the conspiracy, well, right. I do ridicule them, and right. in the news media all the time, they're telling people all kinds of things bad about them, and saying that they're not telling the truth and stuff. Right. Well, Dan, I, my voice is just about to be ready to go out on okay, the I've been, I've been on this damn interview for an hour now. If you've been trying to get me, you know my line's been busy. Yeah, I just tried one time. Oh, God. It's just been going terribly. Oh. So I, I, just wanted to I, ask, I just wanted to ask you one more question. Sure, if I could. Uh In uh, Jack Chick's magazine, Double Cross, he said... Who? Jack Chick. Jack... Oh, yeah. 
on double cross. He said that you were um, Roman Catholic. Is that right? Yes. Okay, that's uh, right. A, a Maronite. A Maronite. What's that? It's Lebanese. You know, in Lebanon we have uh, Maronites, which are part of the Eastern Rite of the Catholic Church. Is that part of the mainline Roman Catholic? Well, it's part of the Catholic Church. We're not part of the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, I see, but not the Roman. No, we're, we're the Eastern Rite yeah. of the Catholic Church. Okay, because the... No, we're, we're older than the Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic is the one spoken of in Revelation 17, you know, that sits yeah. on seven hills and yeah. controls the everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're older than that. Okay, well... We're, we're, we're Maronites, you know. Okay. It's not, it's not Roman Catholic. Okay. We're just affiliated uh, with the Catholic Church, see? All right, that's what I needed to clear up. I think that's most of the questions I had. Anyway. Sure. Okay, I better let, give your voice a rest. Oh, then. I'm thanks, tired. <laughs> thanks a lot for... Yeah, <laughs> call me some other time. Okay. And good luck, old buddy. Okay. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye-bye now. Hello. Oh, is Dr. Beater there today? Come on, please. Hello. Hello, Dr. Beater. Please. It's Dan Hope Safe Service in uh, Festival, Oregon again. I hadn't called you for quite a while. I thought I'd give you a call and see what was happening with anything. I can't hear you. This is Dan Holt Tape Service, you know, in... Oh, yes. That's yes, yes. Yeah, I did hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just wondering how you're getting along. I haven't heard from, from you for quite a while. Well, gosh, I think I sent you a letter some time ago. Yeah. haven't had a lot of tape business here lately, but I did have a couple of calls the other day that... Um, the people that were wondering about you, if you're still alive or whatever. Sure. There's a, a Robert Dean, who's, and he has a talk show there in Toronto, Ontario. Robert Dean? Yeah, he says he's called you before. He has? Yeah. I guess he's uh, asked if you'd be on his talk program before, but uh, he was just wondering if you had any uh, current information or anything like that. And uh, also, he mentioned there's a May Brussel in Los Angeles and a Sherman Skolnick that has kind of a, oh, a little bit of what you used to do, only not not as mu much uh, information as what you used to have. Yes. And uh, anyway, he was wondering if, if he could get a hold of you, and I, I gave him your address. You, you did mention you didn't want your phone number gave out, so. Uh, who, who, is, who are you talking about now, Dan? This uh, Robert Dean. Where is he located? In Toronto, Ontario. Well, he's never called me that I know of. Well, it's been years ago. Uh, also, there's a man named uh, Sal Princiota that works for the Alan Stein Report. And he was wondering if you could give some information on uh, on investment advice. I guess he has a like a uh, gold coin and that kind of business, you know. Where is he located, Dan? In Redondo Beach, California. Uh-huh. Well, I've never heard of uh, that these fellows told me. I mean, Lily's ever said so. You know, I've been mostly abroad. Yeah. You yeah. just got back, huh? I'm, well, I'm just going back again Tuesday. To Lebanon? No, no, I'm going to Europe, you know. I've, I've uh, built uh, private hospitals. Oh, I see. And uh, also in England, you see. Mm hmm And I work on uh, gold deals and things like that. Oh. I mean, I haven't been there. Uh, I still get my inside information, Dan, you know. Oh, on the, inv on the financial things, huh? Oh, on everything, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, but I don't do anything. All I do is write little notes for Virginia Mavis, you know, for Wisconsin Report. I see. And you don't... You don't you know, don't give out anything else. Huh? No, no. Um, uh, although I do have select clients, you know, I I charge them a fee for uh, getting uh, the information on investments and everything like that, Dan. I see. Okay. But I haven't heard these people. And May Brussel, she's still in business, huh? Yeah, evidently she is. You've uh, heard of her, huh? Oh yeah, a long time ago. Uh huh. And. Uh, 
What about this other story you were talking about? Well, he has a talk program. He says his listeners were quite interested. I guess he's uh, he's played your tapes over the radio there in Toronto before. And, and, uh, years ago? Well, I think even recently. And he has uh, people that... Uh, we're kind of wondering about you, whether you're still alive or what has happened to you. Well, after five heart attacks, you know, Dan. Yeah. Five, it takes a lot out of you. I bet it does. Most people don't live through that many. Well, I think the good Lord was uh, intending me, you know, stay alive. Keep you around for something. Uh, <laughs> no, well, the last one, you know, I died. Did you really? Oh, yeah. And then, finally, I died. And then uh, I came back to life about three minutes, four minutes later. Hmm. Can you remember what happened, or do you have any recollection of that time? Oh, uh, yeah, my, my body with, uh, well, whatever it was, was right out of my body. Huh. Every, everybody that's happened to you said it's always real peaceful at that well, time. Well, it is. Huh. Very peaceful. Well, that's something, isn't it? Yeah, I, I died on the way to the hospital, and I went right out of the, right out of the car. Oh, up, up above a ways, huh? That's right, went right through the window. My, isn't that something? That was a quite an experience. Yeah. And it was very peaceful and everything. I've heard of other people saying that. I just never talked to anybody that, that had. Oh, um, yes. Everything goes black. You're dead. And then all of a sudden, you start floating huh. to a bright light. Well, that's really something. Sure. Hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, that actually happened, Dan. How's the tapes going along? Are you selling any or bringing any? I'm all kind of slow here lately. Just well, you always find that out around holiday season. Maybe so. Are, yeah. are you doing any advertising? No. Uh, well, I've, I've done what I could. I put a little bit on the radio and different things. Although, <coughs> the man that runs the radio station, well, he says he doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want, you know, some of the information I've been giving out, he says he doesn't want that to go out over his radio station. I guess maybe he was getting in hot water over it or something. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, the truth will always get you in hot water, you know. Yeah, I guess so. Somebody must have been fresh him anyway, because he, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want anything. Oh, Dad, that's good. Well, uh, you know, every time you want to come here in the summertime, we're always away at that Cape Cod, you know. Oh, okay. Well, but let me know if you come by. Okay. We we still want to come out there, Lord willing, if we can. But right. I don't I don't know. It just depends on when we can get everything tied up here long enough so we can get away for a while. Right. Well, yeah. have that guy in Toronto call me if he's interested. I've never, I haven't had time to uh, throw the inclination, and, and now I feel much better. I may be back into the fray, you know. Well, that'd be real good if you were. Um, you want me to go ahead and give him your phone number then? Yeah. Okay. And uh, how about this other man, uh, uh, Sal Prince Yoda, that... I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him, too, you know. Okay. All right. I just wanted to know before I gave him your number as much as well, I, I, I can use the money, too. Okay. That's fine, then. Okay. There was, uh, one, one of the listeners here was asking if uh, if, you'd heard, if you knew anything about when a depression might come or anything like that on the... Yeah. If the banks are still going to be open for a while, or, or do you know? Yeah. You think they will be? Uh, well, I, uh, I give my opinion to, you know, the guys who pay me very well. Okay. I'll so, just give your number to, to the other man and let him get a hold right. of you. Maybe we can make some change. Okay. You get a referral fee. Well, I don't really care about that so much. I just... Well, you got to pay your bill, don't you? Oh, yeah. But I usually make enough just a regular job. I, I kind of do this just for, uh, you know, something to do to kind of help people out. Right. Well, when yeah. I lost the audio letter... I lost uh, most of my capital, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there isn't a lot going on right there right now. Oh, okay. Right. All right, well, I'll go ahead and give these people your phone number then, and if I can, I'll try to get out that way sometime, Lord willing, anyway. Okay, Dan. How's okay. the weather there? Oh, it's just kind of rainy here and today. I thought you were having snow. Yeah, we had snow in uh, the end of November, which I, I can't remember snow ever being that early here. I know, I know. It's always usually been around January or February. Maybe we have maybe an inch and that's right. about all. It's most unusual, wasn't it? Yeah. A lot of strange things going on. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> okay, Dan. Okay, well, I'll let you go then. Okay, thanks a lot okay. for calling.
Okay, bye. I'll go back to bed now. <laughs> it is a little early. Okay, okay. Okay, bye. God love you. Okay, I'm calling uh, Sherman Skolnick in Chicago, 312-731-1100. Hi, Sherman Skolnick bringing you news, killed by the Monopoly Press, presented 24 hours a day by the Citizens Committee to clean up the court, 9800 South Ogilvie. A visitor was in the office of one of the Pritzker family of Chicago. A lawyer came in. Can I talk in front of him? Oh, he's all right. Well, in the court case, we can win on the law and the facts, I feel certain. Well, why did you butt into our meeting? Well, the lawyer continued, if you want to be certain to win, what are you getting at? You sure I can talk in front of him? Yes, now get to the point. Well, the judge wants five thousand. Well, pay him already. Stop bothering me with minor details like that. Several years later, the visitor remembered well what he heard. In the meantime, he had lost his own sizable business because of court corruption. The year was 1963. At that time, openly pointing the finger at crooked judges was unheard of. He suggested that a group be set up to research and investigate judicial corruption and related matters to be called simply the Citizens Committee to clean up the courts. His career destroyed, his business gone, he donated the only thing he had left, his own manpower and the use of his old car. Like the other super rich, the Pritzker fortune is based in great part on bribery by procuring favorable decisions by fixing judges and promoting large real estate projects by bribing zoning commissioners. In 1969, the Citizens Committee to Clean Up the Courts touched off one of the largest judicial scandals in Midwest history. Involved were more than half the judges of the Illinois Supreme Court, paid off by, in a criminal case by receiving stock in the Civic Center Bank, at that time across the street from Circuit Court, downtown Chicago. Several of the high court judges resigned just as the public commotion was about to spread to a case involving over a billion dollars. The judges apparently had been paid off so developers could get the high court okay to build over the Illinois Central Tracks. That's called IC Air Rights. Reportedly aiding in the big fix was the family of J.A. Pritzker, chairman of Hyatt Corp that went on to build high-rise motels and office buildings near Wacker and Lakeshore Drive. After the dust settled, Pritzker bought out the 30 judges and nine gangsters that owned the Civic Center Bank and, renaming it the Chicago Bank of Commerce, moved it into the lobby of Rockefeller's Standard Oil Building. Naturally, with his background, Jay Pritzker was selected to run a crooked banker's dream, the School Finance Authority of Chicago, to try to take the stink off their financial empire built on bribery. The Pritzkers give a small percent of their stolen treasure to various tra uh, charities, like naming a medical school at the University of Chicago. Knowle knowledgeable people gave a tragic laugh when they heard over a hundred people died in a Pritzker hotel in Kansas City. Were the building commissioners bribed so the Pritzkers could build a flashy hotel with a skywalk over a ballroom? Naturally, other super fakers arranged to give testimonial dinners to honor the Pritzkers as the man of the year. They should be labeled as the crook of the month. Like others in the ruling class or their henchmen, the Pritzkers are sacred cows, never exposed as gangsters. Just another story suppressed by the liars and whores of the press. Devaluation of the U.S. dollar, one way or another, it's playing again. 731-1505. New message Sunday. We change it about four times a week. Surprise message of the week, 731-1107. Leave a comment or tip 731-3332. 
stay on this phone, you can hear the message from the beginning. The latest on courts, banks, espionage agencies, and the news media. On 24 hours a day from the Citizens Committee. This is uh, Sherman Stolman, uh, 731-1505 number. Sherman Skolnick bringing you news killed by the Monopoly Press. Presented 24 hours a day by the Citizens Committee to clean up the courts. 9800 South Ogilvy. The way is being laid to devalue the U.S. dollar, one way or the other. Four of our trading partners agreed to dump some of their reserves kept in dollars, which supposedly would make their paper money worth more and ours worth less. That could mean huge losses such as to Japan that has loaned heavily to the U.S. Treasury. In recent times, one-fourth of all the new U.S. Treasury securities have been purchased by the Japanese. Remember, it was Japanese funds that were the 20 billion of hot money in Continental Illinois Corp. To get their money back in May 1984, they touched off a run that almost pulled down the American banking system. The Monopoly Press has been bar bombarding us with propaganda on the dollar. That forcing down its value is good for us. Oh, yeah? It would mean all those holding U.S. paper money would lose part of their wealth. The super rich, of course, know better than to keep their loot in paper money. Playing games between our paper money and theirs doesn't always work. A surefire way to devalue the dollar is for the president to do it. He can, by White House emergency proclamation, call in the dollar and replace it with a new multicolored currency. But to do that, they need some kind of an excuse. So they begin circulating stories that government checks are being stolen from the post office and altered, and new multicolored checks are needed to prevent counterfeiting. Then they will start a scare story going that there is widespread counterfeiting here and overseas of the present U.S. paper money. Then they will promote stories that gangsters are laundering suitcases full of paper money from dope. Catching dope peddlers and counterfeiters will be the cover story, as if they could exist without the blessings of the rich. Every 50 years or so, the super rich have to shift their financial problems onto the backs of the American laboring people. The happening is called by various names. Down business cycles, money panic, depression. It becomes an excuse to wipe out the bank deposits, if they still have any, of those that produce all the wealth of the country, namely the working class. The press naturally forgets to point out a few realities of history. Every nation that loses a war eventually has to repudiate their debt and spit on their old paper money. We lost the Vietnam War and are left with a monstrous mortgage. Now, talking about history, remember, every nation that lost a war also had their government overthrown. The rich and powerful are spending plenty of time trying to figure their way out of this. To put it bluntly, they want to save their ass, but are not going to save the U.S. paper money. They will thumb their nose at U.S. Treasury bonds, thumb their nose at paying off the deficit. One fine day they will announce that you have until midnight of next Tuesday to turn in your old paper money. You will get back a piece of paper marked 10 for every old one you give them marked 20, or maybe even worse, you will get back a piece of new paper marked one for every piece of paper you give them marked 20. Paper money suckers will get ruined. Holding gold instead of toilet paper, the rich will get richer and the deficit will supposedly disappear. And the liars and whores of the press and their bankers will fill your head with soap opera, stories about abortion, pollution, and the purity of soda pop. 
for a chuckle, this week's surprise message of the week, 731-1107. Leave a comment or tip about our work, 731-3332. Stay on this phone. You can hear the message from the beginning. Donations to keep our work going will be appreciated. Send them to the Citizens Committee to clean up the courts, 9800 South Ogilvy, Chicago, 60617. Thanks for calling the hottest phones in Chicago hotline news. The latest on courts, banks, espionage agencies, and the news media. Uh this is uh, Sherman Skolnick, number 731-1107. I'm calling right now. Hello? XYZ National Bank, John Smith here. What? Do we send money offshore by wire? No, 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 but we do sell postage stamps in the lobby, right. And you could mail your money overseas uh, to evade the tax collectors. What? You're annoyed by that description? Well, uh, tell me, why else would you send money so far away? Yeah, right, we also sell empty bottles with a cork. You can drop your deposit in the ocean, and eventually it will drift over to an island tax haven. What if it goes astray? Well, think about this. What if some crooked Swiss banker claims he doesn't recognize your numbered account and says he never heard of you, huh? Oh, oh, oh I see. You only buy Swiss money orders. Uh, you keep that. You're, you're not a depositor. Uh, do we operate a money laundry? What is that? Oh, oh, to convert dirty money into clean money. Sure, we take in your wrinkled paper money and give you back new, fresh, crisp currency. Is that what you mean? Oh, 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 you mean do we handle gangster and CIA money? Sure, certainly, always. Why? <laughs> the government asked us to do that. We're patriotic, aren't you? What? Scoundrels hide behind the Bible and the flag? Never heard of that. Uh, you must have just invented that slogan, huh? What? Do we handle secret escrow accounts to funnel money to judges? No, 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 no. This is a Republican Party bank. Uh, only Democrats do that. The judges that own this bank don't take graft. Who says so? Uh, the chief federal hangman in Chicago. What? We run an... Uh, that's right. We run an honest bank. Why, did you ever notice our automatic money machines? When you put in your plastic card and you give your fingerprint, if you're a known hoodlum, you know what happens? The, the machine seizes and keeps your card and drops a wire mesh net on you. Then what? What do you mean, then what? A siren goes and the machine automatically dials the police. There's an automatic machine by you there? All right, put in your card.